one end of this and put all the bones and the skin on one side. And yeah, all the stuff you don't want to eat, but because we cook them all at the same time, the chicken can't get to the point where it falls apart. And so it's perfect for our white enchiladas and for our Caesar salad wraps and for this sort of thing. So it just seems kind of fitting that there is all of these there. And another reason why it's going to make us hungry is because they tend to be recipes where they use We're going to move from one recipe to the next. So if you want to grab one of the big bowls right here and open two cans of the cream of chicken soup and one can of the um, tomatoes and a can of chilies, and we're going to find our wonderful spices. And right in front of you, I pre-cooked just chicken breasts with four different kinds of spices on them. So, like a rub, like Italian spices, southwestern spices, citrus basil rub, and a um, Jamaican jerk rub. And so, even though I cooked all of these different chicken breasts, I am gonna do different things and it's not gonna feel like I'm eating chicken every single night. Okay, so this is one thing you could do. If you want it, instead of doing it all at once, if just once a week, you wanted to do power cooking beef. The next week, do power um, cooking chicken. Or um, you want to start out with the investment cooking roasts. You know. So it just really depends. But um, How many hours would you say that was all in here for? Um, so it's really tender. I think it was two hours at 350. So my concern always is, is I want my chicken to fall apart, I want my roast beef to not be totally cooked, and I want my, per my pork to just be done. Okay? But you can see how much easier mm -hmm. this is. And one of the reasons why you want to roast a chicken like this with bone and skin is the chicken is going to be so much moister. You can see here that this is not dry chicken, even though it's fully cooked and it's falling apart. And it's also going to have better flavor. I think we've forgotten what real chicken tastes like because we've all been buying the boneless, skinless chicken breasts, which honestly are not that flavorful in a piece of meat. So. Okay. Okay, it seals. Did you smell? All right. So we want to find the parchment paper, and then we can just throw that away. And again. We can just take this. Do you have it out? Um, it's in the pantry. Okay. So what we basically want to do is we want to divide this into pretty much three even sections of chicken. And just dump everything in here, right? Is that what yeah, you said? Yeah, everything in there. Okay. What are we going to put next? Um, we are going to use that little square baker right there. And you might find if you have a really large family that you are going to um, just use, each, this might just be three meals and a soup if you have a really large family. And gravy. And gravy, yeah. Where are you from? Arizona. Okay. Excuse me. California gravy is salsa. Okay, so we've got that in there. And so we are going to take um, half of our is here and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So we've got our eight tortillas here. And if I was doing this for a really small family, I might use two pieces of parchment paper 
and use this as a divider, okay, so that I was doing two batches at one time. But because I don't have company coming, I'm going to do one whole thing. Okay, so now.